Direi di passare alla sessione internazionale perché abbiamo anche lì 4 o 5, adesso non ricordo di chi sono, sicuramente c'è il professor Kuhn che mi ha già mandato un messaggio da, da Washington, poi alcuni colleghi, amici e della, che fanno ricerca nonostante l'emergenza in cui si trovano eh, che, che sono i colleghi di, di, dell'Ucraina e, e altri che non so se si sono collegati. Darei la parola per questo inizio di, di così non perdiamo tempo e vediamo di finire per le 5. Eh, Matteo al professor eh, Botteghi che insegna eh, anche una materia molto importante dove gli ausili sono fondamentali nel campo delle scienze motorie dell'Università di Bologna Rimini. Matteo a te. Thank you, thank you Francesco, Professor Sicurello. Uh, it's, uh, it's always a pleasure to introduce this kind of session. We usually, um, I think uh, almost uh, often in our meetings, so we uh, conclude the last session with an international panel of specialists. And um, this is in our explicit intention because we need that the, um, you know, an engagement for the international uh, framework uh, of work is of paramount uh, importance <clears throat> for you know sharing and improving the knowledge the capacity building and the exchange of experience and know-how so it's a great pleasure also today for me to introduce this session in this moment i can see connected uh, professor kuhn professor gopalta de pali Yes. And uh, pro probably during uh, during the session, we uh, other people uh, will get in contact uh, to present. Uh, I hope, of course, Francesco, to to have in the session also the professors from Ukraine. Yes, uh, that is a symbolic, uh, very symbolic uh, presence for us. Uh, it's not the first time we dedicated uh, different meetings uh, to Ukraine research in the past. And I hope they they will be able to connect. We will monitor uh, their presence, of course. And so uh, we can uh, go on uh, giving giving so the stage to Professor Luis for his presentation. Uh, very good. Thank you very much. I'm going to try to share the screen. Uh, and... Uh... Okay. Okay. The, can you see the screen or not? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, very good. So uh, my my angle is going to be a, a little bit different. Uh, uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a biomedical engineer that works at the intersection of healthcare uh, with public health with IT and uh, with national security. Um, I will start th this time a little bit different uh, because I always try to have a holistic approach to health. And uh, so I, I use this uh, chart from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and, uh, and I am putting education right in the center because this becomes very critical, particularly because we have big issues in terms of the increasing digital divide between those people that have access and those that do not have access to information. Of course, the transformation is taking place already is uh, emphasis on wellness and on prevention. Uh, but the big, the big deal is that every day, thanks to science and technology, we're having more and more people uh, leaving more time, and these uh, individuals will start uh, needing to have new parts or uh, replacement or fixing it. And that uh, is the big problem of the chronics of the 21st century. How can we afford it? So what I did is I, I look at this uh, sustainable development goals that uh, it was, as I said, uh, created by 
by the United Nations, and I started looking uh, uh, a little bit uh, from a complete different angle. And uh, so imagine if we start with quality education. Now, this is not just uh, college. It can be uh, teaching people to be electricians, plumbers, um, carpenters. It can be both technical or it could be academic education but immediately you have that these people then can be hired they can work there is an economic growth and then immediately that takes care of uh, poverty of zero hunger uh, but also it gives opportunities both women men different races it reduces inequalities and it creates in society uh, some environment of peace, justice, and strong institutions. But by the way, uh, I forgot to mention that uh, I am currently the president of the IEEE Society for Social Implications of Technology. So once we achieve this level, also what happens is now suddenly you can worry about uh, clean water and sanitation, uh, of course, uh, the life below the water, the fish we consume, if, if you have plastics uh, in the ocean, that's a big problem. And also life on land, uh, that means uh, the air and the water that we drink uh, become issues related to health. Uh, so we need to have certain innovation infrastructures to do with that and also be able to deal with uh, climate action. Um, and and uh, basically, finally, when you do all these things, then you, you start becoming uh, part of this uh, good health um, uh, paradigm. Of course, the partnership for all these goals is critical because um, if you don't have clean water, uh, and sanitation, health becomes an issue. And uh, so, uh, and of course, the quality of the food, the quality of the air. So that holistic uh, picture is extremely, extremely important. Um, and of course, as we keep advancing, as I said, we, we need to shift the, pr the program from diagnosing, treating and curing to doing emphasis in staying well, maintaining and preventing disease. Uh, you can see the evolution that we had from 1950 to 22, uh, where we became 8 billion people in the world. Uh, of course, in addition, there is a, the problem that the more people we have, uh, the uh, population density increases and this causes issues like COVID, uh, the potential for infectious diseases. But I'm going to fo focus mostly on the issue of, uh, of chronic conditions. And uh, so we want to transform uh, incorporating genetics, public health, and geomedicine. And, uh, and to do that, we, we have this uh, picture that goes uh, basically from from birth to death, and you go through a whole set of very different situations where very different variables take place. As you can see, when you go from childhood to elderly, uh, you have more and more uh, contact with different clinicians, different new places, and of course, uh, this becomes extremely expensive at the end of life. Uh, so basically, if you don't die from an accident, probably the last year of your life is the most expensive one. And with that increasing number of people over 65 and 85, we, we have to have an alternative on, on how, how to deal with that. Uh, the world population is, uh, is shifting very, very much because Thanks to vaccines, people in Africa now are living longer. 
uh, and as a matter of fact, it's uh, growing five times faster than the rest of the world. So uh, right now we have about 60% of the people in, uh, in Asia, about 14% uh, in, uh, uh, in Africa, another 14% in the three uh, South, Central, North America, and then about uh, another 10% or 11% in Europe. But uh, uh, if, if you look at uh, the development that is occurring, as, as you look at the years at the top left, most of the concentration will be in Africa and in Asia. And this will be the top uh, metropolis uh, in the world or, or mega cities. Uh, and so what, what can we do, you know? Uh, if, if we could look at the world uh, as a hundred people uh, represented by them, only seven have a college education. About 66 of them have completed uh, high school, but 23, 23 of them don't have a, a place a place where to uh, where to live. And uh, so, and in terms of nutrition, out of a hundred persons, one is starving, but that one person represents 80 million. Uh, 15 are undernourished, and that represents 1.2 billion. Uh, and, uh, and yet 21 are, of them are overweight. And of course, this will require a complete different approach where um, imagine early in school, if we taught uh, only about 50% academic, but the other 50% being social. So you, you can teach nutrition, diet, exercise, yoga, uh, to avoid stress. Uh, and now you are dealing with issues that later would become otherwise overweight, diabetes, and, and uh, issues like that. But also in the other world, we have all these problems of uh, the amount of people with no water, no drinking water, uh, no, no sanitation. Uh, and so, so we really have two very different worlds and, uh, and education in my mind is critical to, to avoid this uh, because the more people are able to work, then they can be productive they uh, can help with the taxation and so on to the different governments around the world. And, uh, but it's a very important piece. These are number of uh, the people without access to safe drinking water. And you can see this is very large uh, numbers. You can see also people without electricity uh, and also uh, many may have uh, mobile telephones, but uh, not, you know, about uh, a large number of them do not have internet access. And uh, this, this becomes a very divide. This is actually in the United States. These are numbers from a study in 2021 where you can see uh, the distribution and and uh, those places that look almost white, they have between 22 and 62 percent of the homes with no computing uh, or internet access. Uh, and this is this is terrible because it even becomes a political issue. Uh, most of the states in America in the center, they are mainly uh, Republican. The ones on the coast, they tend to be Democratic. But uh, you start wondering, where do they get the information? Uh, and, uh, and of course, if you would only use uh, social media, now you have all these big uh, issues of misinformation, disinformation, false information, and uh, how do we deal with this? Imagine if 
an intelligent system uh, like an AI captures the information that is false and it produces a clinical guideline that is incorrect, that can kill a patient. And uh, so the reliability of the information that goes into that AI engine needs to be uh, good. And, uh, and this is something that uh, I am dealing uh, with the help of people from the reliability society and computer society of the IEEE, for example. Uh, you can see here, uh, this is from the World Economic Forum, two countries that are very populated like uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh, the percentage of the population that had internet access were 12.9% and 17.1%. Uh, so this, this is very critical. And uh, I designed this chart uh, some time ago showing uh, the number of people without access. You can see the percentages on the last column. Uh, and and this is uh, really, really terrible. You can see, for example, this second one, uh, Kinshasa in Congo, 91% of the people have no internet access. And uh, this creates all types of problems uh, on that group of 17 areas that I mentioned. So it's important when you're dealing with health, not only to look for that box called health, you need to worry about water, sanitation, you need to look at infrastructure and and uh, all these different boxes, as I mentioned at the very beginning. Geomedicine becomes extremely important because the quality of the air, the quality of the water we drink, the, the quality of the uh, things that we eat from the earth become very elementary but important and of course this everything starts at birth uh, but it, if you think about what makes us sick uh, our neighborhoods our houses the materials the painting uh, our behaviors our freeways uh, in 22 we already found pieces of plastic inside a human so even the oceans uh, the fish eat the plastic we eat the fish, we bring plastic. So we have many, many issues. The same thing with the air quality. Uh, after 500, you sh between 300 and 500 in this scale from the air quality index from the EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, we shouldn't go out. And in, in New Delhi, the numbers uh, reflect over 900. Uh, over, already over 5 million children are, uh, they have uh, their lungs destroyed by the quality of the air, and it's really bad. So death attributed to air pollution, and you have lots of uh, studies already saying that uh, when you combine AIDS, tuberculosis, malaria, you multiply that by three, that's the number of deaths that you have from from air pollution. Uh, and you can also see from the World uh, Health Organization, uh, the air pollution and climate change becoming one of the most important issues. And of course, we have too many information silos. The incorporation of information becomes very critical. And I have spoken about this before, but here in this picture, you can see uh, all these areas on the right that belong to that 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 big area that deals with the location uh, or geomedicine and all the new areas that we should incorporate in order to prevent disease. And uh, all of this would be the new electronic record if you want. Um, Many years ago, uh, around 2006, I put together this, this presentation of all the communications and uh, technologies that reach the home. And at that time, I wrote this, uh, the use of technology to transform the home into a safe heaven, um, which basically is a representation 
of what happened during COVID. Uh, people could work, people could do telemedicine, uh, people could uh, study from home, and of course, buy uh, food and other elements through internet. And which is exactly the things that we did uh, during COVID. Uh, the network, uh, obviously, every day becomes more sophisticated. Uh, there is a whole bunch of uh, articles, uh, particularly this one on wearable biosensors, that can help deal with very different variables and uh, uh, that can be used from the home to monitor uh, uh, patients and uh, dealing with very, very distinct parts uh, and all these areas becoming more and more sophisticated. This is the vision that I had in uh, 1996 and uh, published by the federal government when I was at the Agency for Healthcare Policy and Research. Um, it was based on national health identifiers and then obviously to do telehealth, you need computer-based patient records. Uh, you can you have to deal with certain standards, uh, some common vocabulary, and this could be used for clinical decision support. And with the use of high-performance computers and communications, you can do studies on cost and medical effectiveness. Um, and of course, there were uh, very different areas that dealt with the actual uh, different forms of data. Uh, the things that you see there in yellow, LSN stands for large scale networks. Uh, HCS stands for high confidence systems. Uh, HUCS stands for human center systems. And these were all areas that, that at the time were important. Now, this was uh, being uh, drawn in the 96 time frame, and of course uh, the point was by following certain rules, algorithms, and statistical models, we could have a decision support system, which uh, at, at that time was the the version of AI, if you want, that that could be used. Uh, of course, with the uh, precise uh, location of patients uh, through the use of geographically information system and census data in terms of you have any type of uh, local crisis. So uh, genetics, uh, best practices, activities of daily living, evidence-based studies, guidelines, personalized custom-made drugs, all these things that were projected in 1996 now are taking place. And uh, concluding, uh, I believe that education can address the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, it's important to teach our students critical thinking when we think medicine is not just uh, going to the doctor, but rather worrying about the, the water that we consume, uh, the food we eat, uh, our oceans, uh, and how all these things are connected and yet disconnected because society tends to work on silos. Uh, of course, our concern is what about those that don't have information? Uh, we, we need to look at that through the eyes of multidisciplines and interdisciplines. Uh, of course, more and more people are moving into urban uh, locations because of climate change, many areas are going to be below uh, water levels. So mo people are migrating. Of course, uh, uh, not only we have natural disasters, but we have also man-made disasters like wars that make migration uh, huge, uh, and 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 we can see it. Uh, it's not just the war between Ukraine and Russia, the war between Hamas and Israel, uh, but but there is also lack of works uh, because of political reasons and so on. And also uh, wellness, we need to look at it 
through geomedicine, public health informatics, uh, to transform that system uh, into a wellness system. So instead of going to the doctors uh, when you are uh, sick, we would go when we are well and with the hope of staying well. And uh, so uh, I believe that uh, monitoring closely the elder from home would be one of the ways to achieve that. And uh, of course, we need to invest in educating the public because the, the, more, the more people are working, the less crime, uh, the better uh, income. If you have a better income, probably the food you purchase is gonna be a better quality. If the food is of better quality, your health is going to be better. So th this is the type of thinking on how all these things uh, are connected. So I'm going to stop right here. And, uh, and uh, let me see. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Uh, and Francesco, uh, thank you for uh, inviting me here. And yes. uh, um uh, I I will be glad if anybody has any comments or questions. Oh, I see Gopal. Hello, Gopal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Louis Kum. Thanks to Francisco Zigrillo hey, also. Thank you very much. And Dr. Luis, Matthew. Luis, your uh, in particular yeah. for the attention to the tele monitoring of people, uh, elderly people, uh, even at home. Thank you, Luis. I want to say that we, we are organizing an international conference on uh, the end of June 22, 20, 20, 21, 22 of, of June in Tenerife, uh, the International Conference of Telemedicine and Medical Informatics and, uh, and the Internet of, of Things, Biosensors, and so on. Uh, may attention of this date, uh, 20, 21 and 22 of June. Okay, Gopal, Tadepalli. Sir, I have, a, I have a question for Dr. Louis Kuhn, very quick question on 20th very, very of quickly, this month. Very quickly, because yes. we have uh, no yes. more on time. On on 20th of this month, I spoke on the UN SDGs healthcare as a focus. Only 5% of whatever can be documented about a patient as information can be documented. 95% is tacit and it can crop up anytime. So how do we manage a collaboration on medical informatics? Well, um, the... On my time at the CDC in Atlanta, um, sometimes, uh, although you have lots of issues about privacy uh, and protection of the patient, sometimes uh, there are exceptions that you, for example, when you have highly contagious diseases, it's important to protect the public. So that becomes more important than the personal identification because you might need to isolate that person from a highly contagious disease so uh, the balance is not uh, is not easy but there are ways that public health people have to de-identify de and therefore those numbers that you mentioned can be increased thank you okay the oh. next is Presentation uh, from is from uh, Gopal, please. Thank you, thank you very much. Let me just start sharing the screen. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, getting... Gopal, uh, twelve minutes. Yes, I will complete it. Uh, you know, it is just an observation that we have. Uh, we don't really need so much of paraphernalia to understand when to cross over for a single in a cricket, on a cricket field or simply negotiate. The concern here is that when we talk about medicine in the West, we, li we like to pick it up from the deceased. 
whatever we want to learn, including that of the brain, we like to understand from the diseased. So what is the concern here? Can If we can shift how the brain functions to the life, to the people who are living, then what is the most important concern is how do I prove that what is being thought is indeed what is being thought, claimed as being thought. For that, we started talking about a brain model. And the, one of the best works is the computer in the brain is an incomplete it's an incomplete lecture by John von Neumann at Yale University, which has set into motion what is called the von Neumann architecture. If what I have been thinking and working on can be segregated into these modules, and I can start at an input device and get an output device, we think that's a working solution, it's a working brain. And it's like, that's enough for me. It's a working brain, it owns an input, it owns an output, and the memory is there. And we can go ahead looking up from the life. I'm not talking about the cultural context in which learning from the diseased might have happened in the Western medicine. India, Indic traditions always preferred learning from the life. So if we move to the life, these blocks, if I can see, it's a working brain and a working solution. How good or how bad is the solution that's secondary? But then we know for sure that this is a nice architecture which dictates that it's a working brain. And uh, it's far from a complete architecture of a neuromorphic architecture that we know. We know for sure. We don't talk about massively parallel. We are only talking about a set of operations. However, rudimentary the operations are sequential processing, separated computation and memory. Mem memory doesn't do any computation. Memory is passive. Code has binary instructions, very, very simplistic very easy model, which take, which tells me that on the live, there exists at least one person who can do this exercise of, let's say, creating an algorithm on this architecture, it can be replicated. All people are working, all, all brains using it are working, no question about it. Now we talk about a neuromorphic architecture, massively parallel, co-located processing, we are nowhere near that. The best approximation was neural network. This is how I got into working on mimicking the human uh, brain wiring system and uh, characterized as a neuron, a cable, compartmental model. Ideally, we started using compartmental model because we can isolate the compartments very easily. If something comes off, we can replace it by another, almost the way the brain does, the human brain does a compartmental model, a component model, but not really a cable model. Neuron can be approximated in this manner. The way the medical profession wants it to be spoken of is like this. Why did we choose neural networks? It's amenable to a mathematical model. And the same mathematical model that can fit as a nice, uh, let's say, skull cap on environment architecture, which tells me that this is how it works. The working brain is easily understood. A perceptron, a neuron, it's just a part which I'm sharing thanks to Dr. Francisco and team. The electronic circuit of what we have been talking about is the sigmoid function, adequate number of neurons which are weighted in a mathematical model are some, and if it carries forward to a sigmoid function, we'll get an output, otherwise nothing will come. So from a chemical, from a chemical yeah. brain to electronics. Yeah, that is what is the transition oh. which we achieve. And it, it, will, it will, in some sense, be what is called an overall skull cap on a working solution. The fellow did not dream, the fellow who did it first did not conjure a solution out of blue and uh, ended up with this. No, there's a way in which we can cross check. It's a working brain, a working solution. Now, based on the neural networks, we started progressing. Neural networks, deep learning, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. All are black boxes. We do not really do much outside of a mathematical model. What we did was, from a chemical brain, what we were talking about is just chemistry. First, from a chemical brain to an electronic brain to a mathematical model, that began what we call a brain that is reflected through what it does with the computer. The reflection of the brain is seen in what it is doing with the computer, and not really the brain-computer interface that we were talking about. 
So 1980 is only one hidden layer. We have to iterate, iterate, iterate. It's an iterative process. They have to go on doing iteration, number of cycles of learning. Today, there is technology. Today, there is a fast computation. Today, we can have multiple layers. Progressively, we can refine what we are seeing. Imagery can be done. Image processing can be done. An output can come. By the time one sweep goes from input to output, we have seen the image. But is this the way we are seeing images? A big question mark. The medical doctors have their own opinions. So the brain computer, the brain computer interface is really what is called collecting the signal, a pre-processing, which we are always telling we are contriving. On the machines, we are contriving a pre-processing, pre feature extraction, classification, application interface, application feedback to the brain. What is this feedback control system? Is it only a propagation, a back propagation from the output to the input? These are million dollar questions, which we are not really addressing, but we know that with a bidirectional BCI, that is what we call, you know, full duplex communication, it can interact with a device like this and an external controller and control it. This much is possible. It's all on the line. We are banking on a von Neumann architecture for a working solution. And what we are also protecting is a live wiring system that is dynamic within the brain. That is also reflected on the hand, the prosthetic hand, or whatever you want to call. Feedback, sound, vision, touch, everything is in theory possible in algorithm selection. As this much of complexity is increasing, the overtly simplified von Neumann architecture that is a verifier for a working brain and a working solution is not adequate. We need to build better proving systems. A note that I have exchanged with Dr. Matteo and Dr. Francisco uh, several months back is really happening. Now, all this is in the space of computational neuroscience, cognitive neuroscience, and artificial intelligence. The idea of human mind, a computer is, as, as a computer is central to cognitive sciences, Turing played a key role in developing this idea. The precise course of Turing's influence on cognitive science is complex and shows how seemingly abstract work in mathematical logic can spark a revolution in psychology. It is no more chemistry. It's no more what we are talking about in epileptic, I'll come back to that later, in epileptic convulsion, which can be treated only with medication, chemical, or insert electrodes and subject the person to a shock. It's just a, a, a happening. It may be a revolution in psychology. That's what we have been talking about. Science is complex and shows how seemingly abstract work in mathematical logic. It gave us a mathematical abstraction. It gave us what we called, you know, an electronic way of dealing with the things rather than the chemical first. So what we are talking about, thanks to Turing, is shifting into an empirical research, a verifier, which is there on the Turing model, whether we have completely unraveled the Turing model, Turing's paper on mind, that we will talk about it. It's, it's an ongoing research. We had Turing centenary year 2012. 12 years later, it is still a puzzle. We still have to go a long way. So we postulate that mm -hmm. the human brain in this way can capture a skeletal system, reciprocate. These are not multiple views of the human body. That's a holistic idea which Dr. Louis Kuhn was mentioning in the beginning, his approach of Louis Louis has been the holistic method. All of these are reflective. All of these are reflectable, and that fits the Indic traditions. It is reflectable in that brain. And a Turing model helps us do a better way of verifying this relaxed art. It verifies. It involves a spinal cord, it involves a sensory neuron, it involves a motion neuron. A response is there, pain is there. We can relieve that pain in a theoretical manner. We can establish a topic which I've been interacting with Dr. Francisco, my good friend Dr. Yaro Sergeye. Uh, but then we don't have so much of precision mathematics, which will come. Numerics is something which we have to still fill it in. So, what are the happy chemicals? That's how we started dopamine, serotonin. Uh, those are just four dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphin. These were the chemicals which were dominating. Sure. Not many chemicals cross the blood-brain barrier. So we have been banking on this. And does it mean all, all reflex or relaxation? These are certain things which we have to look at it. 
there are neurotoxins. So the neurotoxins are also known. Uh, why did we bother about only this? There's no option. Chemistry was the first thing which we moved out of engineering. Now we are able to bring all this into liveness from chemistry to electronic, chemistry to mathematical, chemistry to working solutions which are verifiable, pen and paper a theoretical proof. Progression from brain augmentation to implants. From 1780 we were doing. And very recently, 2019, Elon Musk, Neuralink, and Mark Zuckerberg, Meta, are working on brain-computer inter interfaces that could pick up thoughts directly from your neurons and translate them into words in real time, which could one day allow you to control your phone or computer with just the thought. A thought will work on it. I have been mentoring a few projects which are working on that. These are old ideas. Speak your brain. You think about it, it will automatically be converted into a speech. A working brain, a live brain, not a diseased condition which is doing this exercise. It's a live brain. We can still do that. Epil epilepsy, this is something which I could study with very senior medical professor, Professor Krishnamurti Srinivas, who's an expert in epilepsy. is ranked 32 in neurology, world, uh, world number 32 in the neurological uh, field. And he was very keen on what exactly is happening. Uh, he was very curious what happens if we put an electrode, what happens if we put leads, extensions, neurostimulators are there. He was always challenging. Can I, can I have a box with me which pops up and tells, now it's time for you to relax, let the neuro, neurostimulator take action in a pill form or in, in an electrical pulse form. No more, he passed away, but that doesn't matter. Before neurotechnology is used to scale in society, we need to protect humanity with the right to self-determination over our brains and mental experiences. I leave it to the policy makers, very eminent policy makers, Dr. Louis Kuhn, Dr. Francisco Sikra, are very fortunate to do this presentation today. Before neurotechnology is used at scale in society, it's easy to use at scale. It's not such a difficult exercise. We need to protect humanity with the right to self-determination over our brains and mental experiences. My experience is my experience. How do I do that? We'll have to figure it out. Our brains are the final privacy frontier. There is no second opinion about it. They are the seat of our personal identity and our most intimate thoughts. Some neuroethicists argue the potential for misuse of these technologies is so great that we need revamped human rights laws to protect us before they are rolled out. We need to slow down the pace. It's in a frantic space. All these hero, all these models are coming up. A lot of people are working. Youngsters are working. But we need to talk about that neuroethics in a more comprehensive and a cogent manner. Maybe Dr. Francisco Secrello's conference on 21st and 22nd June, he was mooting this year, uh, may take up a session or something which is very, very crucial. So the model of neuron is now very complex. This tripod model will cover all bodily functions. It can take care of chemistry. It can take care of biology. It can take care of many things, logical operations, dendritic memory, sequence recognition. It's something which can be done like this. Dynamic mean field model, GABA gain modulation, GABA A receptors, PET scanners. But all this can be integrated. All this can be integrated. A holism that says that digestive system, respiratory system, uh, circulatory system, they're not completely different viewpoints of specialization or super specialization. They will all come together in the brain and that can be read from a live brain. Uh, is realistic neural modeling realistic? I like this book, The Paradoxical Brain. 2011, I was assisting Professor Krishnamurti Srinivas. is no Gopal, more, as I said. Three minutes, three minutes, exactly. Anyway, now, another two slides. I'll be finishing. I, I clocked it reasonably well. Glimpses of the labeling brain, the bright images of pet, medical images of emotion, the X-ray today, 2011, Vinilor, yes, Ramachandran contributed a, a, a nice paper in this. And this book was there uh, during that time. They had some discussions. Dr. Ramachandran earlier on spoke on 2001 Conscious Conference. If a machine is expected to be infallible, it cannot also be intelligent. Turing noted in 1947. Turing's deterministic universal machine receives the most attention 
but his non-deterministic oracle machines are closer to the way in which intelligence really works, intuition bridging the gaps between logical sequences. These are some things which are very, very crucial. We are not yet into non-determinism. Our Turing model banks on deterministic automaton. You can build an organ which can do anything that can be done, explained von Neumann, paraphrasing Turing in a lecture in 1949. But you cannot build an organ which tells you whether it can be done. That's a question which we have to ask, ask ourselves. The next frontier, therefore, is, is a way to control what different varieties of spirit technology, neurofeedback, brain stimulation, synthetic psychedelics, most prominently, all have the same general objective of abetting a person's search for a higher state of consciousness. If that is all happening in the mind, and we can control using a theoretical proof and a model, anticipate and predict, there's nothing like it. And that's what I've been interacting with Dr. Francisco Sicarillo. So the brain-computer interface has to undergo a, 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 a way of looking at it first. It's all in the mind, we say, but that mind should be able to sit right on the top of neurofeedback, brain stimulation, synthetic psychedelic, psychedelics, and then we need to look at a method by which we can establish it. Sample size, test sample, no, no, or no observer, no, non-observing sample. The statistical method is something which is scary. So we'll have to look at some other method. A theoretical proof is what I am submitting. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Gopal, for this. Uh, <laughs> what do you think about the? The new the news uh, relating the chip uh, implanted uh, on the brain human brain uh, last days in uh, in the project of uh, Elon Musk. Yes, sir, it is there. I have seen that. Uh, I have also noted what he was doing. I suppose that it is a it's it's a bit of a hyperbole. We don't think that all that that is claimed is there. The last days they have to put a chip to extract what is tacit in his mind. What was he talking about it? But the claim is not realistic. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, Alessandro, do we send Alessandro? Next speaker, Alessandro. Yes, the, there is um, the next speaker. This is speaker, maybe is uh, uh, Abib, this should be Real Bibe or people from Ukraine? Uh, no, uh, there is a uh, uh, professor uh, Abib, probably. Abib? No, uh, professor Sedrati, excuse me. Professor Sedrati on behalf of the professor Abib, of the professor Gaza. Ah, Abib from Sedrati. Sedrati, okay. Please, Professor Sedrati. Hello, Professor Francesco. Ah, uh, how are you? Okay. I'm please. fine. How are you? How are you doing? <laughs> After uh, Rabat, uh, I am here. Yeah, it was it was a very nice time. We were so happy to okay. have you there. Uh, Professor Hayat Sadrati, she is logging in mm. right now, so she will be able to present uh, on behalf of Professor Hassan Ghazal. We are very sorry he was not able to join us today. Oh. Do you present uh, something about the Gazal uh, or your group uh, or not? Uh, Professor Sadrati will be presenting something on behalf of the team. She is logging in right now. She, uh, it just uh, the, the Wi-Fi is uh, a little bit late, so, so she is trying to log in. Quindi go and avanti, Alessandro. Vuoi coordinare tu, Ale? Che poi noi chiudiamo. Okay, Constantine is here. Buonasera signori, sono qui e parlo Buonasera. inglese, ma come eh, si fa il... Um, how can I share? Ah, share a screen, ok. Sì, sì, c'è scritto. Uh, sì, uh, share. Do you, do you see my presentation? No, we see you. Uh, no, 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 I will share. Uh, wait, wait. Oh, share a screen, share a screen. Ah, okay. 
Okay, this, this, okay. Uh, well, this is okay. uh, the okay. slide. Okay. Now, do you see the first slide? Yes, now yes. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, dear colleagues. Um, Welcome from Kiev. Yes, from Kiev, uh, <laughs> governmental hospital, the Department of Internal Medicine. You know, it is a war in Ukraine, so we uh, do with the uh, civil people and combatants. Many people suffer from this war. Uh, in times of war, the largest risk group for the development of stress disorders and subsequent PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder, this is abbreviatory PTSD, is military personnel who are directly involved in a combat. The effect of stress factors uh, on the body is manifested by tension of the autonomic nervous system, hypersympathetic autonomia, with its uh, subsequent negative impact on the functioning of the cardiovascular, nervous, endocrine, immune, and other body systems. Subsequently, if the stressful impact uh, disappears, the autonomic nervous system restores uh, the disturbed balance, and the body maintains the necessary homeostasis. But if the impact continues, like now, we have war for two years, and it is distress, uh, and possibly increases, then the depletion of adaptation reserves develops, and the compensation occurs, disruption of the functioning of organs and systems somatic and psycho-emotional disorders appear and progress. The challenge faced by both the patient and the doctor is to detect uh, at an early stage the autonomic imbalance that occurs in individuals after suffering distress. Assessment of the psycho-emotional state using only questionnaires is not specific to disorders that may occur in the future and does not reflect the level of depletion of the body's adaptive reserve. In addition, it may contain an error associated with impaired subjective self-assessment of their condition in people with organic damage to the central nervous system, for example, in case of mind blast trauma. Mind blast trauma now in Ukraine is the main type of trauma in this war because of work of artillery and missiles. So you know the news. Uh, second slide. Oh, okay. Uh, therefore, for a comprehensive assessment of the condition, we used the method of mathematical analysis of heart rate variability, HRV. Since it characterizes the functional state of the autonomic nervous system and allows us to objectively assess the energy component of ensuring the functional state of both the whole organism and the human psyche, psyche. soul, psychological uh, state. Uh, heart rate variability is well known and widely used method, especially in the space medicine, in the um, aviation medicine, um, in military medicine, in sport medicine, in rehabilitation medicine. Uh, there, are, uh, there were uh, concerned standards of HRV in 1996, but uh, we continue to de develop these uh, standards um, uh, Close to our population because uh, the population's level of health changes. So we must uh, sometimes um, renew these norm population normatives in each country in Ukraine. In Italy. Uh, the father of this, this method uh, is Roman Bayevsky, is the founder of Soviet space physio oh, physio physiology and medicine. He was born in Ukraine in Dnipro region. He spent the last years of his life in uh, exile in Canada. <coughs> what is heart rate variability? Heart rate variability is very simple method. 
uh, every student can uh, can uh, do it. HRV is a sequence of time values of the intervals between air waves of ACG complexes of sinus origin. I emphasize and sinus origin. If there is no sinus rhythm, you will have a, in Italian casino. It will be a storm, not not uh, waves. Uh, this is limitation. Arrhythmia is the limitation uh, for using uh, HRV analysis. HRV reflects the complex effect of neuroendocrine regulation of the sinus node and therefore indirectly characterizes its functional state. So sinus node is the mirror for the whole body. Most diseases do not develop immediately, not instantly. During uh, the transition from a state of health to a state of disease, there is an intermediate stage, the stage of reversible changes, or the stage of prenosology. This term was provided by Roman Bayevsky in the uh, 1960s year with the start of um, a space flight. Most people are in this yellow zone. Uh, it is rare, rare, rare to find a completely healthy person. Uh, the purpose of our study was to investigate the functional state of servicemen's uh, autonomic narrow system. Servicemen's, I mean, combatants uh, of Ukrainian army forces to evaluate to evaluate it from the standpoint of the age norm and to identify the relationship between HRV and psycho-emotional state, to evaluate the corrective effect uh, of transcendental meditation. We use this method. 45 military personnel who participated in hostilities and 36 civilians were examined. To detect depression, stress, anxiety, we used the DASS-21 questionnaire, a questionnaire for screening PTSD it is a PSL-5. Autonomic dysfunction, according to Wayne, uh, daytime sleepiness, according to airport. Why I say sleepiness? Because most of my patients, combatants, have a very bad sleep. They sleep about three hours. It is too few. This is the cause of psych um, Psychiatric pathology, you know. The ACG was recorded in six standard and augmented limb leads for five minutes lying down in lying position and three minutes sitting using a miniature portable device. Uh, you may ask me why uh, we use it sitting position. I will answer you because in sitting position, uh, the state of brain of patient uh, does not change as such significantly when we lie down the patient. So this is a most natural natural state for patient for patient and um, patient uh, mind does not changes in sitting position. When I sit, I speak. When you will lie down, there will, will be very severe orthostatic reaction and brain will change it, its function. So uh, to catch um, uh, quantum or functional state, we need uh, to we need put our patient in sitting position. As uh, Professor Yuri Gorgo said uh, in his thesis, um, in, in his doctoral thesis, he's very famous Ukrainian psychophysiologist, the quantum of state of the brain is uh, about three minutes in non-extremal conditions, so about uh, 2.5 to 3 minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, we use a miniature uh, portable uh, device, uh, dear card. Yeah. Uh, okay. The ACG and HRV were analyzed using the Finnish Ukrainian cloud service Cardiolize and the program for recording and analyzing ACG signals, called Oracle. 
uh, made in Institute of Cybernetics of National Academy of Sciences uh, in Ukraine. In this picture, you can see our soldier combatants in hospital after, uh, before and after treatment in sitting position and in a lying position. Uh, when analyzing HRV indices in both age groups, we explored two groups, young groups for, from 20 to 39 years and the oldest uh, older group from 40 to 60 years. Um, deviations from the Ukrainian population age norm were found. Characteristic for both age group of servicemen is a decrease in total age heart rate variability. According to the S SDNN index, a decrease in the activity of parasympathetic modulation by RMSSD and high frequency, the activity of bareflex center of the medulla oblongata, low frequency, and subcortical sympathetic ergotropic nerve centers, very low frequency. In servicemen, uh, Roman Bayevsky's stress index exceeded the norm by 3.3 times in the younger age group and uh, by five times in the older age group of combatants. <clears throat> the correlation analysis revealed a significant number of the reliable medium strengths and strong relationships between HRV indicators and the results of questionnaire assessments of psycho-emotional state. It has been established that the strength and number of these connections increase as the level of anxiety increases. Transcendental meditation is a simple, non-traumatizing, natural mental technique, it does not require effort, concentration, or suggestion. It requires 20 minutes twice a day in sitting comfortable uh, position with eyes closed. TM is not a religion or philosophy and does not require lifestyle changes. During the practice of TM, the usual mental process becomes less active and the special psychophysiological state uh, so is achieved, so call it awakened calm. Uh, there were many studies about TM. I will show you just uh, some studies uh, of uh, functional MRI. You see, it is a very strange uh, state which is characterized uh, of decreased activity in the brain stem, uh, slowed breathing, heartbeat. On, on the other hand, increased activity in the prefrontal gyrus of the cerebral cortex, villages, inner awareness. Uh, uh, <clears throat> there were published uh, meta-analysis of 146 studies that shows us uh, uh, advantages of transcendental meditation in comparison with the other methods of um, correction of psychological and psycho-emotional states uh, with the different uh, breathing techniques, uh, feedback, mantra meditation, etc. <clears throat> In our study, we examined um, uh, 36 people who did not participate in hostilities uh, 21 women and uh, 15 men whose average age was uh, 20 uh, was 42 years 42. Um, so what was the effect of medi of transcendental meditation on a heart rate variability transcendental meditation increases the total hrv which is expressed it increases is dna as dnn and also increases uh, to, um, uh, spectral power of very low frequency and low frequency, which indicates an increase in the activity of subcortical sympathetic nerve centers, humoral regulation, and the bareflex center of the medulla oblongata. The fact that the activity of the parasympathetic link of heart rate regulation assessed by the time series index 
RMSSD increases while the activity of the spectral index high frequency does not change significantly. May this fact may reflect a change in the respiratory pattern during a TM because uh, RMSSD does not change when we change our breathing pattern, frequency or, or depth. But uh, you know that high frequency is depending on usual um, frequency of um, breathing movements. Uh, this is the explanation. Um, the increase in uh, very low frequency and low frequency during TM, in our opinion, is a reflection of the state of awakened calm, where against uh, the background of deep um, psychical relaxation, fully awakened mental activity and concentration remain. That is, this state is not similar to falling asleep, uh, trance, or hypnosis. TM reduces Bayevsky's stress index and index of activation of regulatory systems, ERs, which means it reduces nervous and emotional tension, and the degree of tension is in regulatory systems. After practicing TM, an increase in total power is noted which indicates an increase in the power of the body's adaptive reserves. So conclusions, the presence of signs of nervous and emotional stress and depletion of neurohumoral regulation reserves in military personnel participating in combat operations was objectively, objectively proved both by questionary methods and by HRV analysis. The high level of correlation between heart rate variability and psycho-emotional state revealed in the study uh, gives, uh, uh, gives grounds for the widespread introduction of the method of mathematical analysis of heart rate variability, both for assessing the psychophysiological functional state of servicemen and for monitoring the effectiveness of its correction with different methods, pharmacological or non-pharmacological. It is advisable to continue researching the impact of transcendental meditation and breath, uh, breathing practice and other non-drug methods of uh, correction. My colleague, uh, Victor Matsishin, is an advanced neurologist who studied in, in China with, this, uh, with different types of meditation. He's the teacher of Transcendental Meditation in Kiev. He has uh, his own center, Ayurveda 192. If you will come to Kiev, I will show you your, this uh, him, uh, center. Um, uh, he uses uh, traditional Eastern practice like massotherapy, reflexotherapy, breathing techniques, um, individual, uh, we say about individual approach in medicine. So, uh, do, dosha classification of um, uh, dosha classification of uh, human organism, and um, individual um, setting of, for diet and treatment, diet, physical activity, exercises, uh, and uh, treatment. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you to you. Elaboration of portable and the rapid EEG solution yes, yes. for this disease. Please. So, uh, salam alaikum. Uh, I am uh, Hayat Drati, PhD in Computer Sciences. Uh, I'm a student, a, a former student of uh, Professor Hassan Ghazal. I recently uh, defended my uh, PhD thesis uh, with uh, Professor Hassan uh, Ghazal. Uh, this uh, presentation focused on automatic and uh, intelligence monitoring of alcoholism to enhance the efficacy of in-health interventions. Uh, we investigated the effectiveness of the discrete to continuous algorithm for optimal channel selection to detect alcoholism through EEG recording. the introduction of both medical and technological aspects of our of this of our work the, the objective of this study will be presented as well as the method adopted to analyze eg signals uh, followed by conclusion about obtained results 
This uh, chart presents the prevalence of disease related to alcoholism. Every minute, six people in the world die from alcoholism. Alcohol consumption is estimated at 2.3 billion, which equals 43% of the world's population aged between 15 and over. Alcoholism has harmful effects on a person's mental health. It causes severe and chronic impairment of fetal organs. It's also associated with negative social outcomes and negative economic impacts. According to the World Health Organization, alcohol is causally linked to over 200 health conditions, including liver diseases, road injuries, violence, cancers, cardiovascular diseases, suicides, tuberculosis, and HIV, uh, and the HIV AIDS, which it is AIDS. And the list is not exhaustive here. Thank you. As with most drugs, the brain can be adversely affected by alcohol consumption. This can impair memory, cognition, decision-making, and motor skills and increase the risk of dementia, depression, and other mental health issues. To screen and diagnose alcoholism, traditional techniques are based on self-reported and or biochemical measures. However, each of these methods has its limitations. Science and technology Advancements in health have a promising future in the neuroscience field. Clinically, electroencephalography (EEG) is an effective, safe, and painless approach for analyzing the brain activity. EEG is the measurement of the brain's electrical activity within a specified period using electrodes, which are placed on the scalp, on the individual scalp. The signals coming from these electrodes are called channels. Machine learning are and statistical analysis methods were employed in alcoholism screening and diagnosis based upon EEG signals. With raw or pre-processed data, the challenge is to achieve a high rate of diagnostic accuracy for alcohol dependence considering the time complexity and the memory performance. The challenge increases when it comes to handling data sets of a high dimensional order, such as EG signals. This work seeks to assess the efficacy of the discrete to continuous algorithm in reducing the data set dimensionality by selecting optimal EG channels that retain the most significant information for alcoholism detection. The DTC algorithm, uh, DTC is uh, the abbreviation of the discrete to continuous. So the DTC algorithm was designed to detect, uh, firstly, molecules, asymmetry, and the recognized shapes. Its, effect its effectiveness has been proven in several fields, including point pattern matching of fingerprints and online signatures. The DTC relies on point pattern matching. The aim is to find out if there are any similarities between two sets of points. So the red and green forms on the graph are two time series. To compare these two forms, most approaches perform a point-by-point -point comparison, resulting in a distance matrix which may lead to long response times. The DTC method serves for similarities in a comprehensive way and not through point-by-point -point matching. The basic idea of the DTC is first, converts uh, the discrete form of N, which is the green uh, point, set of points, into a continuous representation by polynomial interpolation and retains intact the discrete structure of the test form A. Then 
the discrete form of the reference form n is ignored. And the test set is positioned on the continuous representation of the reference set, as shown here. This is done by translating points along the time axis and the distance measure dm between the continuous form of the reference of the reference set and the points of the test set is calculated. This alignment along the x-axis is repeated until a minimal distance is obtained. The data analyzed in this work are retrieved from a freely accessible machine learning repository archive. The data come from study examining chronic alcoholic deficiencies in processing visual information. The participants had to determine whether a uh, displayed pict picture was the same as the precedent picture. EG signals uh, were recorded from 122 individuals, including 77 alcoholics, alcoholic subjects and 45 non-alcoholic subjects. The archive contains three versions of the EEG data set, small, large, and the full versions. We performed experiments on the small and the large data set versions. Recording of EEG signals were taken from 64 electrodes. The study's participants had to be free of diseases that may affect results. The plots shown here illustrate the power average of EEG signals over 10 trials and 64 channels depicted by time and channel. The TTC approach was evaluated using the dynamic time warping algorithm. DTW is one of the most used measures of the similarity between two time series. Unlike the concept of Euclidean distance measurement, the purpose of the DTW is to find optimal global alignment between two time series. This is done by using temporal distortions between them. The first application of the DTW algorithm were in the area of speech recognition in, 19, uh, in 1970s. The DTW feasibility was investigated in EEG data analysis since 1985. The DTW proved its effectiveness in detecting Alzheimer's disease by monitoring gait and the physiological signals. Selecting the most significant and optimal EEG channels is a matter of finding the subset of channels that allows classification of a given subject into its appropriate category, alcoholic or non-alcoholic, with close classification performance achieved using the entire EEG data channels. The first step aims to analyze how EEG signals of non-alcoholic subjects differ from each other. Here we represent this chart represents uh, the brain area uh, and the position and different position of electrodes on on the on the, on the, the most important on the on the, uh, the different brain areas uh, on the uh, on the scalp. Uh, in this in this uh, part, the distance measures were calculated for EEG recording of 10 tries per individual and for single stimulus according to two scenarios. The first one, comparing non-alcoholic EEG signals to those of other non-alcoholic signals in the same group. And the second step uh, focuses on comparing alcoholic with non-alcoholic EEG signals. This chart displays the distance measures generated by the DTC algorithm for one channel and 10 trials. The x-axis refers to trials and the y-axis indicates DM values, uh, which are DM is the abbreviation for distance measures. The blue plot cancels as the, as the five 
cancers at uh, the five uh, at the five uh, at the five uh, test uh, this means uh, this is because the non alcoholic signals was compared with itself zero means that the compared signals are the same the red plot refers to the values calculated between alcoholic and non alcoholic subjects price as shown no correspondence exists between the two signals uh, this, uh, this this is the same chart as the previous, but uh, performed uh, using the DTW algorithm. Results uh, obtained results obtained with uh, using uh, both DTC and DTW uh, algorithms leads lead to uh, similar uh, results. So I so the uh, all, uh, four channels were identified. Those were C3, CP5, PO7, and FH channels. This chart, to, uh, to further explain the selection process of optimal uh, channels, uh, this chart provides false negative rate values calculated for all EG channels. The X coordinates represent EG channels, and the false negative rate values are reported in the Y coordinates. The DTW algorithm produces similar results to the DTC algorithm. As illustrated, the minimum points that correspond to channels C3, CP5, P7, and F8 are quite distinctive on both plots, the orange and the uh, black ones. Uh, the F and R, the false negative value, uh, F, false negative rate value is smaller and decreases towards zero compared to the other Y coordinates on the plots. In identification, uh, in, in conclusion, uh, we performed an identification of the most optimal and relevant channels over 64 EEG signals. Uh, the identification of channels leads to handling reduced data set dimension in future studies of EEG signals classification. The obtained results are encouraging to undertake uh, the classification of EEG signals using the DTC algori algorithm on a larger data set. Thank you. Any question, please? Thank you. Thank you. Any question? I have a question. This is Gopal here. Uh, is yes. there a way, Gopal from India, is there a way of Finding out the impact of alcohol on bone marrow from EEG, the bone is not there in the brain. No bone is there. Uh, uh, but uh, then, sorry. Excuse, excuse me, I didn't uh, understand the question. Uh, please, uh, can you repeat can I, the question? Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, I'll do that. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, is there a way of finding out? the impact of alcohol on bone marrow from the electroencephalograph signal that is being analyzed. Can you, there is no direct reason to believe that the bone marrow is reflected in the brain, but is there a way in which your study can give? Uh, there is some uh, some words that I can't understand. Uh, can you write it or uh, I? Uh, I will do that. I'll write in the chat. For people. Others can take a chance. Thank you. I'll do that. Uh, okay, That's just good. write in this discussion for, uh, that I can understand uh, some yes. words. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will see it to just. Uh... Uh, yes, doctor, I doctor, uh, doctor. I, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, yes, the, I can hear you. Uh, as I as I uh, explained previously, the 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 focus of uh, the focus of our study was uh, to uh, compare uh, results to compare uh, signals uh, to compare signals as two time series uh, between alcoholic and non alcoholics. So uh, the uh, the impact of uh, the the impact the relation of the relationship between 
uh, alcoholism and uh, other diseases in the in the body uh, can't be studied using the DTC uh, 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 using this method. Okay. 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 Uh, so uh, we, we didn't study the impact of uh, you, uh, the impact of alcohol on the body, but we can it. But we can it uh, uh, signals of alcoholic and non-alcoholic uh, uh, non-alcoholic uh, individuals. Uh, the objective was to uh, to detect which which individuals were uh, were uh, alcoholics. Is it clear? Yes, I understand. I see the point. You know that there's alcohol, but how much of the damage you are not figuring it out. I, I see the point. You'll find out a sample, and based on your study, you can find out whether somebody is an alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Yes, uh, that uh, I understand. Uh, focusing only on a small uh, set of uh, of channels uh, because to because uh, the. Uh, the, the the set of data of uh, the set of channels that were uh, used uh, were, were contained sixty four channels. Uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, huge number of uh, electrodes can be used uh, in a portable manner uh, to, uh, to, uh, to to uh, to to detect alcoholism. So we uh, the, the, the the aim was to uh, to reduce the, the the size of the data set uh, in the uh, in the objective uh, in the aim to uh, implement this solution in a portable uh, in portable uh, uh, device. Yes, I understand. You can simply read the EEG signal and conclude whether the fellow is an alcoholic or not a non-alcoholic. Congratulations, yes, yes. you are getting your PhD soon. Very good. Thanks. Th thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the last is the D Dimitro uh, Vakilenko. Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay. I'm sharing my screen. Does you see my screen? Yes. Great. Uh, thank you for opportunity representing uh, our research. I understand uh, I'm last and uh, all day is few tired. And I try so shortly tell about few innovation which we evaluate. We're talking about uh, telediagnostics and telemedicine, telerehabilitation. Problem, according to uh, all health organization, near 17.9 million people die from cardiovascular disease. And 31% of this, this include. Uh, more than uh, 1 billion people in the world have some form of disability. In Ukraine, more than, than 4 million people need long-term rehabilitation, including more than 300,000 children. Health monitoring and assessment of adaptive capability are necessary for individual rehabilitation planning. Currently, rehabilitation medicine system is crazy fragmented. To begin, uh, in this slide, I'm, uh, we show about first our innovation. Uh, we uh, propose use blood pressure monitor not only systolic, diastolic, and heart rate. We propose additional analysis pulsation, which we get from blood pressure monitor for uh, additional analysis. For example, in this slide, we have arterial oscillogram uh, one person and another person. You see this so different. I want refresh uh, for you. Uh, function. Uh, Vessels is a peripheral heart, and they have so large place in the blood circulation system. As a rule, uh, 
traditional medicine concentrate only mainly only in the heart function but place uh, of the vessels not used enough our research concentrate for improve to bring advanced understanding uh, what happened in the vessels in the autonomic and, nef and central nerves and in the heart for better understanding total cardiovascular system functionality what use principle we use heart rate variability we can understand from this level centralization of autonomic nerve system in the heart and vessels adaptation analyzation of pulse form given the understanding about functional and morphological condition vessels arterial oscillogram form functional and morphological condition vessels also Central analysis biosignals, identification fast and continued central nerve system and autonomic nerve system, adaptation to compression of cuff, machine learning for disease risk identification we are using for cardiovascular, lung and mental disease. Background for our implementation to arterial oscillography based in the heart rate variability, uh, about pulse form analysis, rheography, spectral analysis biosignals, encephalography, and dynamical adaptation to different phase compression. Uh, one more innovation our the study dynamical adaptation of body. And we can understand what system, what mechanism, what pattern are involved in the adaptation to compression by cuff. Uh, here are a few indexes which we can identify. Uh, this index is uh, from Bayevsky, which identify activity, which we adapted each to activity index of arterial oscillograph regulation system. Uh, integration function vascular potential we identify, autonomic nerve system, index centralization of cardiac and vascular hemodynamic factors. Uh, additionally, we uh, measure about level regulation cardiovascular factors, index autonomic cardio, uh, cardiac hemodynamic and index centralization. Also, we in detail study function of heart uh, vessels. We can understand about uh, characteristics, the dynamical property of vessels, which are man manifested during compression by the cuff. Indicators characterize the quality of adaptation vascular toe, the level of excitability at the beginning and during compression arrhythmia, vascular elasticity, and systolic and diastolic vascular capacity for each of the 10 indicators we evaluate. We study nerve system. Rufia test give additional information about adaptation dynamics. And expert system collect all information and with machine learning, can, uh, we can understand the risk of different disease. From this research, uh, I will refresh for you only from one measurement blood pressure. We can understand all this value. And uh, if shortly this will be health level and adaptation capability, central and peripheral blood circulation, dynamic response of blood vessels to compression, autonomic nerve system, risk cardiovascular pulmonary, mental disease. Next, our concentration, we go in some upper and we see process of telemonitoring of vital signs uh, by ECG, arterial oscillogram, uh, pulsation, breathe, and temple. Uh, we support our expert system in 
individualized uh, support system active living can support personally and video consultation with medical profession. Uh, what we done from 2010, uh, we evaluate new methods for arterial oscillography, oscillography later for thousand patients. Different kinds of nos nosology and functional tests are done. Uh, we did defended doctoral disease uh, and we working with few another doctoral disease. Uh, we, we completed clinical trials the 2021-170 patients for health and cardiovascular disease. Uh, we also uh, tested ECG, geography, spirography, uh, Martinico Shalevsky functional test with 20 students. A nitroglycerin blood test, general biochemical, actual uh, oscillation uh, registered from different as a blood pressure monitor, stiffness, and another. And we published a lot of papers uh, in the different uh, journals and uh, published house. How this work from blood pressure monitor? Via mobile application, data go into calculation kernel, and, and in the personal dashboard, user can see all this value. Uh, they can uh, they can share with his doctors, and or doctors can store his patient in the list or study. This view of interface our Oranta our uh, information system where we can see from each measurement arterial pulsation, probability disease, uh, prognosis of uh, adaptation uh, capability of body, uh, heart and vessels, and conclusion. In, that, uh, in the expert system, we have more detailed information about functionality. This up from the bars, uh, you can see in detail we, we visualize all value which we use for calculation for more deep analysis autonomic nerve system heart vessels nerve system and different another one this a view of report which are generated for each measurement uh, how this view we have uh, integrated uh, blood pressure monitor as another one also this ECG different channel and we integrated our technology to the smartwatch with and another technology we evaluated. This will be useful for patients for fast and high quality monitoring, identification of risk, heart, lung and mental disease, doctors saving time for uh, preliminary diagnosis, uh, quality selection of uh, diagnostic trajectory, Unique assessment dynamic adaptation, interactive monitoring of heart indicators uh, before and during training in the military, veterinary medicine, and another. Also, we development medical information system for telerehabilitation, uh, where uh, doctors can plan personal uh, rehabilitation trajectory for patients. Uh, patient central telerehabilitation support by uh, multidisciplinary team. Determination of the patient condition according different classificator, uh, task uh, description of task participation in the multidisciplinary team, achieving for rehabilitation goal by patient description, expert rehabilitation support, video consultation, and interim and final assessment rehabilitation program goal. These are our teams, but not all. Uh, our uh, way, uh, different uh, collaboration and example applications. This can be for preventive diagnostics and monitoring, active uh, activities of heart, vessels, autonomic and central nerve system. This can be for future research, uh, detection of stress, psycho-emotional burnout and depression. We did a lot uh, testing for uh, prognosis depression how depression uh, connected with arterial pulsation and uh, we so clearly understand this uh, in the functionality level is acting. Also, we uh, using it for different uh, 
identification different uh, segments, functionality of organs by uh, visualization, determines the probability of existence uh, complication case by COVID, assessment professional psycho-emotional states athletes, and in the different direction can be evaluated this, like for virtual reality also the soul sensitive technology for vessels identification. Uh, this can be for patient-centric platform or uh, for arterial methods evaluation. This can be also developed. Uh, our goal, uh, our technology will be in the each blood pressure monitor in the well, and we go into the, this task. Thank you for your attention.